Welcome everybody to a brand new series for the channel in Space Pirates and Zombies number two. As you can probably imagine, this is going to be the sequel to Spaz 1. If you're familiar with that title, you kind of know what to expect. But uh, in case you are not familiar with it, this is going to be a game that's really heavy on the space combat. Really fun space combat, mind you. Elements of strategy, elements of um, resource management, elements of Forex titles as well. There's a lot going on with this game. It has been in development for a long time, and I can tell you right now, it actually shows because it doesn't seem like they've cut any corners of this game whatsoever. Um, this will be released on the 19th for everybody else, so we do have a little bit of a pre-early access um, look at it here. So I'll be rec uh, recording a couple of episodes up until the release date, and then once it comes out, we will make a judgment call whether it continues or not. But at least for now, I wanted to show you guys what um, Space or Spass 2 is looking like. And without further ado, let's get into the game over here and get the ball rolling because I'm really excited to be showing this one off. So single player it is. Now, it should be noted the game will be completely voice acted. At the moment, they have like a simulated voice acting thing happening. So I went ahead and disabled that and I'll just be reading the text for my own accord. But um, they will be adding like a full featured cast down the line. Um, element 126, Resin or Res, it was the answer to everything. A transmutable element with the power to unlock the secrets of the universe. It gifted humanity everything there was to know about space and time. Res triggered an explosion of technological advancement. Mankind spread to the far reaches of the galaxy, growing exponentially in numbers, along with the reliance on Res. The United Terran Alliance was founded to control the countless population. Eventually, they sought to ration the use of Res. As rest supplies thinned, conflict arose. An epidemic of fortune-seeking miners forced their way to the galactic core, where resin was most abundant. Eventually, the primary rest source was discovered. All rest stemmed from a sinister and timeless energy being. A being awakened by the use of rest, they had sprung an ancient and recursive trap, rest being the bait no budding civilization could possibly ignore. Corruption spilled outward into the stars, twisting the biological matrix of all it touched, integrating it into machines. Mankind's own technology, their own dead, had begun to turn against them. For years, they struggled to survive against a flood of abominated metal and flesh. Billions were lost to the infection, only further feeding the expanding corruption. In spite of hopeless obliteration, the very fabric of life itself arose to fight the Dark Entity. As a race, humanity came together for a single purpose. In some twisted way, they had found peace. Peace, however, does not last. People fell back into their self-minded ways. Humanity turned into a scramble for the remaining rest, which now could no longer be renewed. As the UTA lost its control over the galaxy, they collapsed the entire warp gate network beyond any hope of salvage. Human ingenuity, it turns out, knows no captivity. Out of need, a resin-based drive was developed, allowing more direct travel anywhere in the galaxy. The Void was reborn as a wild, untapped, and lawless frontier. As years pass, piracy and skirmish battles rage. Precious rest of prize, raw worlds are recklessly colonized and disputed by the legions of makeshift starships. An entire eco ecology of nomadic drifters emerge endlessly recycling the wrecks of constant war. All the while, the nearby forgotten saviors of the galaxy tirelessly struggle to exterminate the last remnants of the infection. And that will indeed be us indeed. So, let's get the ball rolling here. Right off the bat, you got some space combat already? I love it. So let's get into this as soon as possible. We have Carl here. Sigh. It seems like yet again you dimwits have flown my ship headlong into an infested region. That is the third time this week. Six million forms of communication and I'm yet to find one that can articulate how moronic you fools are. Computer, power up the weapons and shields emitters. Uh, the doctor is in. Um, there's going to be a lot of um, kind of like witty dialogue as well that goes on and banter between characters as well, which is actually pretty neat. So um, just keep that in mind. This is all, all going to be voice acted, but at the moment it's all being simulated, so I'm just taking the reins of it myself. Let's get into some combat, though. Alrighty. So, let's start by probably going after Homeboy over here. Speed up here if we can. Let's bring this guy down as soon as possible. There is a little bit of a caveat with this fight right now, which I don't want to spoil for you just yet, but um, it's not it's not what it seems, I guess, I can tell you right now at the moment. Let me get this little small bugger here. Get your ass down there, my friend. Super kill 269. Again, that's probably a dead giveaway right there, that super kill bonus thing that popped up, but, you know. You'll soon see what I mean. Uh, luckily, our shields are absorbing some of this damage right here. You can ram these dudes as well. If your shields are down, if you go in with the nose, you can actually bring down... Um, you can do some really massive damage, but you definitely want to hit with the nose over here. Yeah, bring this guy down. Bring him down! You, you flesh mutant space zombie thing, you. You gotta die. 
He should be blowing up soon. Let me actually get away from your blast radius here so you don't blow me up in the process. As you can see, everything runs smoothly right now. I'm like running at a full 60. There's a lot of stuff happening. Everything, the game's completely maxed out. So it is really colorful, really pretty. No issues with the performance here so far. Let me see if I get that guy. Uh-oh! They just blasting me with that giant final Kamehameha or whatever that might have been. All right, let's go with the Big Bang. Sure, Big Bang attack. Maybe not even Big Bang. What's the, what's the other one? The one that Goku uses. It powers it up over his head. It takes him like 70 episodes to power it up and like throw it off. Whatever, man. Destroyer of Worlds. That is me. That's what I do. In Destroyer of Worlds, apparently I am Homeboy from Fantastic Four over here. What is it? Galactus? It's Galactus. My Marvel um, savvy is a bit low recently. But what can I say? I'm more of a DC guy. Whoa, what happened here? What do you mean I died? I didn't die. Get out of here. That is me dying. Game over. Oh, I guess we're going to have to restart all over again. Huh? Score 128. Would you like to try easy mode? What are you talking about? No, it's not the game yet. By the void. Level 13 is truly blah, blah, blah. Carl, seriously, do you realize the crew members suffocated on the lower decks because you routed power from life support to play stupid video games? Silence, imbecile. They gave their lives for the greater good. A scientific mind must stay active or it would writher and wrinkle. I'll boil any ocean. I'll eradicate a whole litter of Narcalian pods. I'll divide my zero. I'll divide by zero if I have to. Don't do that. Please refrain from sneaking up on another living creature like that. Do you not notice the horror people have to endure every time they look at your face? You are fortunate I did not in inadvertently dismember you in a panic-induced frenzy. This Carl guy is uh, quite the character. Everyone, shut up! To the bridge right now. Anyone not here in 30 seconds is getting vented into space. No, that's no good. You don't want to ever get vented into space. Well, I'm glad to see everyone was able to get up to the crack of noon to work towards sustaining our survival. Let me re present to you all the garbage dump we'll be shifting through this afternoon. Yes, most of this is useless junk. Yes, this is utterly pathetic. But what choice do we have? This ain't no way to treat this here metal mother. The lady deserves better. Let me be snapping on some something fresh. Um, he might not be the best candidate to operate the tractor prototype. Keep in mind that Carl built this thing, so it goes without saying, it's dangerous. I would hate to have to come all this way just to have Mackenzie rip us apart like a rabbit chimp with Carl's untested toys. You know how those two can be? I don't really care who does what, but we need to jump on this opportunity to expand the mothership. The core module will give us some elbow room, while those wings will give us some much-needed firepower. Let's get those modules fitted so we don't have to listen to each other breathe anymore. Alrighty, cool. So right now, we are going to be assembling our ship over here. It's another feature of the game, assembling your own ship. Now, we, um, let's see, we have some cores over here. This will be junk, mind you, so that's all we have at the moment. Later on, we'll be able to, like, soup ourselves up and upgrade ourselves up pretty well. But for now, this is all we have. So let me go ahead and remove the old tail. Let's remove one of the wings here. Move that wing. Move that. That here is our nose. And here is some junk body area. This is going to be our main draw, as you could probably imagine. So, up here, what do we have? This one is going to be... Let me see here. Let me see about you. This is going to be a subcore. Are used to expand the size of your mothership frame. They do provide passive bonuses to hull, armor, shields, reactors, and flight systems as well. Now, mind you, the more pieces you have to your ship, the slower you're going to kind of be, especially if they're junk parts. But at the moment, that's all we kind of have. So let me go ahead and bring this over here and just place you this way. I'm going to go for like a vertical type of ship here because if you make it horizontal, you're kind of like a bigger target for enemies. So we'll go with a smaller frame. Let's go ahead and bring this other sub-core maybe back here to protect our main core a bit better. We'll use our tail back down here. And we'll go ahead and start plugging all these wings. Wings. You, you, you better, you better connect, Wing. Had enough of your shit now. You connect right here. You too. Alright. Bring you here. Bring you here. It's like Legos, you know? You just uh, connect them where the, where the arrows match. Relatively easy. Anybody could do it. I can do it. I think. Kind of. I'm failing at it at the moment. <laughs> there you go. What exactly do you think you're doing? Stop leaning on that overhead projection like a crutch. This is some archaic top-down space shooter you're playing here. This is real, brutal, kitten-eating life we're talking about. Join the rest of us down here in reality. And of course the camera can be adjusted, so instead of over top, we can just do this. And that's the one we're definitely going to stick with, absolutely. Our omni-lithium capacitor is now tapped out. I've devised a method to simply eject a spent cell while fabricating a new one out of surrounding space dust. Do not ask me how it works or why it makes sense. All that you need to know is that you you will be able to fire the ship's weapons while the new cells is being installed. Okay. 
So let's do some reloading action here for one. And obviously, um, whenever you want to reload and get your capacitor back up, you won't be able to shoot for a while, so keep that in mind. You can't even use your shields or even boost, so if you will be kind of like in a vulnerable state. Alright, I'm bringing the weapons online. It's that indeed that you want to call the gar that garbage. Let's blast open some of these containers. Maybe we can find something to eat that will make our hair fall out. I decided that it would be best if basic resources towing was left up to the ship's computer. These items are too fragile to be handled by Neanderthals. It brought me great pain to watch you struggle with the tractor beam. <laughs> he knows that I was struggling. Jesus. Alrighty. So, we have to blow these puppies up and then just go ahead and bring them on in. To the east side. The east side. We have no shields right now, but luckily all we're doing is combating some boxes over here. You saw that missile? Those missiles will be launching automatically on their own. As long as you're just aiming over the target itself. So you should be fine with that. I went ahead and hit E to target that though, so our missiles will indeed know. That's what we're going for. Um, the targeting will actually work out better once we start expanding our fleet, once we start adding little, like, scavengers that help us, help us out in combat. But we'll talk more about that here pretty soon. So we got everything picked up? Great. Uh, please assimilate and perform the following diagnostic tests on the kinetic shield system. Your life and my hull may depend on it. You are correct, ship that talks to me. And the shields are not charging. Great. Bring them online. Bring them online. Shields up. And there you go. Now they're boosted as well. I'm going to boost more. Let's boost! Boosted, baby. All modern space-capable engines come equipped with special regenerating boost capacitors. Please practice making rockets go fast now. Oh, I will practice making them go fast. So, let me go faster. 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 I have to say that I'm impressed. You were all able to lace this thing back together without eating each other. The only thing that remains is to test the rest drive. Mackenzie, start the pre-flight procedure. From scotch and caviar to beers and tears, how is that Jameson is only gonna... It's only the other one with ambition to dig out of this dung heap. Just cook those bloody engines up and lay in a course for somewhere that isn't here, please. Area clear. So we're still gonna be going through some significant amount of tutorials for now, but just keep in mind, it's gonna slowly kinda get us back into the main game here. So as so we're done in this area, let's go over to the star map. And this is where most of our fun is gonna be entailing us. Uh, welcome to the Super Ultra Star Map 9000. This holographic interface will allow you to scan all known galactic entities, plot mother ship destinations, and communicate with other ships and star bases. Please practice untethered exploration now. Okay, you got it. We're gonna explore. So, um, right now we have a reward of 20 experience. Time moves only when you move. All transportation, mining, harvesting, and communication is done via the star map. Take your time and plan your actions. Explore a new territory. Push the right mouse button to set a destination on the map. Use the mouse wheel to adjust the zoom levels. You absolutely got it. This guy wants you to read this. I like this, by the way. In case you do something dumb, like the game's coming over here, like yelling at you, like, you know, you should have read. Otherwise, you're not going to be asking stuff in the forums, because this actually talks about the galactic forums where people are going to be like, how does this work? You know, because you're not reading it. Uh, so, yeah, I've already done this. You can go ahead and read that if you want. I guess I haven't. All right. So, at the moment, we're just going to move around, and we need to explore... I guess what we're going to do for now is actually go into another star system itself. Alright, we're mobile. If you're all thoroughly satisfied, we can finally get on with it. We still have stickies out there, not to mention a laundry list of equipment we need before we can do anything about them. Time is of the essence and we're wasted so much of it already. As anxious as I am to find a so-called sticky, we have not encountered one for many cycles. The ship does not yet have a nasty to stand on, therefore we need to scout more easy opportunities to exploit. So at the moment, we're going to want to go and start finding some resources for ourselves here. So um, the colored ones are going to be indicated that they're going to be owned by a significant faction in the game. There's going to be a lot of factions in the game. You could actually align with them. You could um, be their enemies. You could set up your own star base, tax stuff. As I mentioned, there's definitely some 4X elements in this title as well. Um, this right here, by, for instance, is actually owned by Wanjo Jan. I could come over here and pillage whatever's happening in this wreckage. However, um, Wanjo Jan might not take too kindly to that. So if we want to stay kind of like in the up and up with these people for now, we might just kind of want to hold off on that one here. So let's just move into this other system. Here we go. This is not owned by anybody, so we're going to acquire some scrap over here, which is kind of like a currency in the game. Alright, the problem with building an enormous structure that wraps around the entirety of a star is that it can make a huge mess when that star decides to have a stroke and blow up! Automated drones now comb these colossal scrap fields, collecting anything worth salvaging. And we will do much of the same. Now, um, this is the amount you could actually harvest completely, assuming you had the double resource bonus, but we do not have that, so all we're gonna do is just ransack. 
Now, you're not going to ransack everything in one go sometimes. Although that one we did. We actually got 95. We even got more than that was actually available there. I'm surprised. But sometimes you have to, like, ransack more than once. In so let me go into this other area here. Okay, I'm calling it. We need to shift our focus back to more pressing needs. Everyone on board is expected to understand that the mothership takes priority over everything, including our very lives. To that effect, mother needs to be fed. If we can't find what she needs, we die along with her. If we cannot trade for what we need, we'll have to take it by force. As cruel as it is, that's just life. Uh, I see fit to enlighten everyone that every action on board consumes something. Don't let these critical supplies run dry. I've gone to the effort of labeling all the viable extraction points as well as indicating when they are ready for harvest. I also have color-coded human selfishness so you are aware of any other factions claims ownership of these areas. That's how I talked about, like everything is owned by somebody, so... Or not everything, but some of them are. So this over here has three scrap pile. Because we already kind of um, scavenged that one. So we're going to come down through here. These are bandits. We definitely want to avoid them. At the moment, we have to find some rest, scrap, and some goons. Goons will be kind of like our workers, so... We definitely don't want to step on anybody's toes just yet. This right here is going to be a piece of lore. I do believe I could pick this up without pissing off this area, though. If we tune our warp frequency just right, we can sometimes pick up essential... Or pick up residual data transmissions bouncing around the old warp network. Though the gates are smashed beyond repair, some seem to be able to hang on to these low-density data packets like a ghostly reminder of our past. And these will be all added into our little lore thing, which we could actually read up on if you want to find out more of the story in the background of everything that's actually happening in this galaxy here. So we're going to go ahead and just scan for now. We're not going to view it, but we will probably do down the line an episode where we check out all the lore itself. Or maybe just a separate episode. We'll see. Alright, so at the moment... How's our rest? Our rest supply is looking pretty decent, but if we run out of rest, we can't travel anymore. Here we go, what do we have here? Ugh, only eight scrap. Right now, we're not having too much luck when it comes to finding um, a untapped supply of rest, scrap, and goons. Now, goons are essentially clones. Here we go, here's some goons. And based on the time that passes, you'll be able to see the charge up time on that one. So it means that this has been pillaged by somebody else already. There's only two of 25 here available. That's pretty terrible, but it's part of the tutorial, so let's go ahead and ransack this here right now. Alrighty. I sense some underdeveloped crewmen require contextualization about how urgently we require these basic resources. More specifically, human resources. The ship requires an astronomical volume of periodic maintenance and repair. These tasks are far too dangerous to allow anyone with a shred of intellectual value to perform them. Therefore, we do not turn away many applicants. Remember, the bottom of the pyramid needs the most bricks. Of course, we need bodies to operate and maintain the ship's system, but we also don't want to feed any more mouths than we must. Most of our food is fabricated from rest. Balance is the word of the day here. So. The more people you have, the more people you have to feed. And that means more rest. And that's rest to, you know, travel about. So you kind of have to manage how many people you want to kind of undertake so your ship is in tip-top shape. But at the same time, you have to feed them and stuff like that. So do keep that in mind. Here we have another piece of lore. We might as well just collect that here for now. So we'll scan it at the moment. Very nice. Let's go onwards. Is this the edge of this one? Yeah, okay. So big old map over here. It's a star map over there. We gotta find some resin scrap. I'm gonna avoid those bandits here momentarily. Here we go. There's more goons. That's actually... No, no, we don't need those goons. Though. We're actually in our top number if needed. Can't find any gosh darn res! Well, yo, where the res? Oh, you know what? There's a lot of scrap here, though. Drones? Do not beat me to this thing? That's res up here. We got it. Okay. So, let's go ahead and ransack this area. 104 of 200. How many did we get? Finding a good, fresh, um, refined alloys isn't easy. Everyone wants it, but nobody's making them. Even if we don't immediately require scrap, it's good to keep some around for trade. Every space nugget in the void will accept it as currency. You're absolutely correct. And over here we have our res. So we'll come up here, and ooh, that's going to be a pretty decent amount of res, actually. Alright, while you can't find res at the local corner store anymore, there are a few special places where res does continue to grow. These rare and mysterious locations are highly sought after. Yeah, I mean, we haven't been able to find one till now. 48 of 100, that's not too bad. Alrighty. As much as I des detest this hellborn excrement, we're stuck in a universe ad addicted to res. We are no different. Without it, the res drive will collapse, leaving us to limp along at sub-warp. We'll be easy pickings for bandits or anyone else looking to kick us while we are down. Alrighty, we also got to level up now? Perfect. Behold my happy place. It is here my power grows. Using the data we have acquired from the sensors, I can refine our ships and equipment. While I would adore being able to refine every single archaic piece of junk on board, the physical nature of the universe forbids it. Treat the data analytics with respect. So we're going to select our first perk here. So this one's free. The part size increase. Small parts. Connect quality parts to your mothership. No need to use any more junk parts. 
And now we have... Ooh, you know what? These are actually random, I want to say, because I had a few different ones in the off-camera run I did here. Anyway, so we have a, a chance to boost our shield by 20%. We could also increase our reactor, which isn't a bad idea, or weapon damage. I like the idea of either reactor or weapon damage, to be, damage, to be honest with you, but I'm going to go with weapon just because... I'm a big brute. I always want to power shit down, just mow it down as fast as possible. So there we have it. Who are you? Oh, I wanted to see who that was, Jameson! Uh, now that we have some currency to spend, we should stock up on strike craft. We do not want to get overwhelmed when engaged by multiple targets, plus it gives us our enemies something else to shoot at instead of us. Alright, cool. So this will be like the fleet building that I talked about here. We have to go to an actual spaceport that sells it for that, however. I wanted to see who this was. These are just bandits. Their threat is at 6 right now. Okay, I don't want to mess with them. Let's go ahead and collect this little bit of scrap here momentarily. We got 21 out of that. And let's look for an area, a star base. Here's one. Markup is 120. You want to look at the markup because obviously um, each little area will be selling items at a higher cost depending on how they want to like mark it up too. This is the markup of 140. This is the markup of 130. You know what? The 121 is not too bad. It's probably the cheapest one I've found, at least like with my off-camera run and this one right here involved so far. Let me pick up the scrap here first, however. The more scrap we have, the more stuff we could buy. Ooh, rest down there too! Yes! I'm already enjoying this little detour we took. Collect the res as well, and then we'll come over here and start buying some strike fleets as well. Ransack this over here. Excellent. Let's go on down over here. The markup is at 80! Oh, it went down! I'm so glad we waited! Okay. Though I am completely disguised by the, disgusted by the idea of cooperating with others in a fashion that implies intellectual equality, it often cannot be avoided. Just try not to get ex extorted too severely. That's what I mentioned about the, um, the up marks and whatnot. So, close up. Um, you, I'm not here to fight you. You're a high threat. You would destroy me, so no. We could also go to the arenas if we want to, like, you know, do some combats and, like, you know, acquire items, other scrap, etc. Right now we just need to do some trading. In an effort to curb interpl interplanetary diseases, just about all of our traded goods now have to go through this handsoft filtered interface. Nobody can stab you in the back or shoot you in the face using an interface like this. Just configure the deal and the autoloader should take care of the rest. Perfect. So over here, I want to buy myself a couple of strike guys. We'll hold them 385, and we're also going to pick up a tang, I'm going to say. A well-rounded ship with beams and cannons. Hmm... Yeah, sure, we'll pick up this thing here. So we'll pick these two up. We owe them 550. We have 719. Is there anything we could sell to them at the moment? It doesn't seem like we do. And goons, we could sell some goons off. We require 60 only. So let me just toss in, like, I don't know, 15 or so sounds relatively fine. We'll have, like, you know, a little bit over 65 left over, right? Yeah. Do like 15 of those. I, I'm going to keep my res and the scrap. That's fine. So it'll cost us 104 or 504 in general. That's cool. Make this trade happen. Excellent. So, we could also hide our equipped parts in case you don't want to trade off your equipped parts if you do that. But for now, we have the Gimp and the Tang. So, let's get on out of here. And we should go into a simulation over here of our little, um, bad boys in the background here. After this one, we'll probably start wrapping it up for this first episode. Uh, oh, for Gamma's sake, why did we drop out of the warp? Nothing is wrong with the ship, Elsa. I've scheduled a combat drill for today. We're getting a little too soft for my liking. Jameson, it's three in the morning. Don't matter. You gotta train. So we could swap over to our little strikers as well if we wanted to. We could move them around. Um, all the ships command and control, right? This will tell us about how to like target systems over here. So for instance, as I mentioned with the E, this could be now our main target and all of our ships will actually go after this asteroid in general. I could swap over to the other guy if I wanted to. And back to our main ship in general as well. Just to see what's more maneuverable sometimes you might want to do that. And I could also set up like defense. So if I wanted this guy to be defended, will have all of my little strikers just kind of roam around myself and defend me. So, for instance, I could just come over here and be like, hey, you know what? Drop the old defense on homeboy over there, and he will be taken care of. And we could also move over here if we want to. So that's kind of like a way to control your little strike craft. All right, that's not bad. Not great, but not bad. Let's try something a bit bigger. What do you got in mind? Target asteroid? You got it. So, let me swap over to my big boy here. That's gonna be our target. Everybody, let's go! Blow it up! And we should have the auto combat equipped if I'm right over here. Come on, little strikers. See those missiles over here launching? That's from this guy. 
That's a tang. It's a tang, buddy. I'm not sure why I'm using the shields. We don't have to use the shields at the moment, but I'm just so used to having my shields up most of the time. Uh, we have sufficiently asserted ourselves over this inanimate material. Surely we must be done with these mindless examinations of, com of competence by now. The area is now clear, and we're free to go back to the tactical map. It is what it is. Alrighty, guys, and with that, we're going to wrap it up here for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Leave a thumbs up, leave a like to support us a lot. Stick around for the next episode. It should be up relatively soon. As I mentioned, we'll be covering Spaz up until the release date. And once it is out for general public as well, we will consider whether we continue with the series on the channel or not. But for now, just take a think of this as more of a preview and what to expect for you guys whenever you decide to pick it up on your own accord. Um, I will catch you next time.